everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Now that everyone is getting vaccinated and things are starting to return at least somewhat to a pre-corona normal, there is an exciting thing occurring. We're finally able to have costumed events again! <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like this kind of presents a lot of questions. The main ones being, if I don't already know about events in my area, how do I go about finding them? Or if there are not already events in my area, how do I connect with other customers and create my own events? I hope to be able to answer these questions and more in this video. Now, of course, maybe you're lucky. Maybe you live in one of those historical costuming meccas like the Bay Area or the Los Angeles area in California. In that case, you're probably doing just fine for events and can just join up with the Greater Bay Area Costumers Guild or Costumers Guild West, respectively, and have some sort of costuming event to attend basically every weekend. But for the rest of us out there, it's not quite so easy. So first, how do you go about finding an existing costuming group in your area, if there is one? Well, I know a lot of us have kind of a love-hate relationship with Facebook, but honestly, it is such a great way to connect with other costumers. Join up with one of the big costuming groups, such as History Bounding or Historical Costuming Without Judgment, or you could join a more time-focused group, such as 18th Century Sewing, 19th Century Sewing, or Victorian and Edwardian Sewing Group. In these groups, search to see if there's already a thread where people can share their locations, because there often is. And if there's not already a thread, create one so that you can find out if anyone else in that group lives near you. If you find other people in your general area, send them a DM and see if you can find out from them about any existing costuming groups. And if there are not any existing costuming groups in your general area already, then maybe you and your new friend or friends want to start one together? Likewise, you can also either Google or search Facebook groups to see if there are any reenactment groups in your area. Even if you're not interested in reenacting, there may be people within those groups who could point you in the right direction to find other costuming people in your area. Now, I feel like this goes without saying, but Keep in mind, if you live in a rural or less populated area, you are probably going to need to widen your search area in order to find other costumers. There are probably a lot more costumers clustered in a large city like Seattle than there are if you live in rural Wyoming, so you may need to be willing to travel a bit for your events if you're in a less populated area. So, once you have found a costuming buddy or two, how do you go about planning or finding events? Obviously, if you were one of the lucky people who found that there was already a costuming group in your area, then you may be happy just with the events they already have planned. But if you're not happy with those events, or if you want to plan your own events anyway, here are some of my best tips. First, if you're trying to grow a costuming group, accessibility is key. Is your event accessible to people of all costuming skill levels and people of all income levels? Because if your first thought is to have something like a very expensive formal dinner where the dress code requires everyone to wear only late 17th century mantuas, then your turnout is probably not going to be great. But if you have a picnic that is open to costumes of any era, then you'll probably be able to find a lot more people interested in attending. True, your group pictures might not turn out as aesthetic, but at least you'll be making a lot more new costuming friends. I cannot tell you how many events I wound up skipping as a baby costumer, who did happen to be in a great place like the Bay Area, because I couldn't afford the ticket to attend. It's pretty disheartening. So to keep your entrance fees low, or non-existent in some cases, here are some great ideas for events. Picnics! Picnics are seriously the best because they don't need to cost a penny and are very approachable. You can hold your picnics in a park or, if you're lucky, on the seaside or lakeside for a nice change of scenery. Find out if there's a pretty flower garden near you that allows for picnicking. Just make sure you bring a parasol. 
<laughs> you could also do these in combination with photo shoot events or just do a standalone photo shoot as your event. If you have at least one person handy with a camera or even if you know a non-costuming friend who enjoys photography, just have an event where you wander around a park and take lots of pictures of each other. It always sucks when you work so hard and don't even wind up with any pretty pictures of your costumes. You could also do a potluck house party with your new friends. Of course, this works best if someone has a historical home or maybe a nice backyard. Then you can each bring a dish to share and maybe bring some hand sewing projects to work on together after your meal or you could play a historical card game or a parlor game. Other accessible events are goes to events. <laughs> What I mean by this are events where you and your new costuming friends, if you have found some, go to an event that already exists. This could be a renaissance fair, a reenactment, a museum, a fort or historic home tour, ice skating, a small town festival, or even a movie release of a new costume drama. There's lots of options out there. To find events to attend, just Google historical festivals in your area because a lot of small towns will put on things like this to commemorate places or events. Generally speaking, each person is usually able to pay their own way with these sort of events and they are usually somewhere between free to $25. Just make sure you find out ahead of time that wherever you do decide to go is okay with people attending in costume. At a certain point, you and your friends may want to plan something a little fancier. Teas tend to be a great middle ground here. In general, I have found that most tea rooms will expect you to show up with as many people as you have stated on your reservation. So for a tea or other similar event where you need reservations, particularly one where a fixed price menu is involved, I recommend that one person in your party collects money from all the others up front when the reservation is made. That way, if only four people from your party of six show up, you're not on the line for the two no-shows. Can you tell I've learned this from experience? And don't forget to include tax and tip in your per person rate. Of course, it may be that you want to plan something even more extravagant. Maybe a gala in a rented hall with a catered dinner and everything? Obviously, this is much more challenging to plan, and this is something where you should have a pretty good idea from before you even start planning that you'll have a sufficient number of attendees to make this financially possible. And like the tea, money for this kind of event needs to be collected up front. Personally, although I have created my own costuming group in the Seattle area and have scheduled many picnics, photo shoots, goes to events, and teas, a catered event in a rented hall is still beyond my financial reach at this point, as organizing an event like this is almost on par with organizing a wedding. And not only will you almost certainly be responsible for deposits and such, but even the per person rate to attend will be quite expensive. And it's a lot of work. Now, of course, at a certain point, you may find that there are so many costumers in your area that you can start to be slightly more exclusive as far as dressing to a theme goes. Or you may find that you prefer to have smaller events where everyone is dressed in a more cohesive manner. That is entirely up to you and your costuming friends. One way to get around this potential feeling of exclusivity, though, is to plan your events very far in advance. Are you determined that you want to have an 1870s ice skating event? Maybe. Announce your dates a year or so ahead of time to give more people a chance to make or procure something appropriate to wear. Honestly, the more lead time you can give people on any event, the better, since Probably most people don't just have a closet of costumes they can pull from, no matter the era. That said, that was also one of the reasons that, when I was a baby costumer, I made a goal of making at least one outfit from every era. Now, I never have to worry about making anything new if a last minute event pops up. By the way, if you are in the Seattle-Tacoma area, please do feel free to join the Puget Sound Historical Costumers Guild on Facebook. I have linked this group, as well as the other costuming groups that I mentioned earlier, in the description below. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you and that you're able to find some new costuming friends and plan some fun events with them. 
If you have any other tips about finding or planning costuming events, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear them. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, it's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down below in the description. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Heidi and Sharon. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!